Happy Wednesday. My name is Amy. This is Jean. Yeah, think about it. My name's Amy. Yes, this is Jean. And if you've never tuned in before, we want to just kind of tell you why we do this. Um, hey, Leslie and Linda. Gosh, we just got through eating and the dogs are getting up on the counter. Um, so if you've never tuned in before and you're wondering why are these two people sitting here in front of this squiggly black wall with a fish painting, um, it's because we have, between the two of us, how many years experience? A hundred. We don't have a hundred. Is that painted wall behind us? What? Is that a squiggly painted wall behind us? Yes. Whew, I thought I was having flashbacks. Um, anyway, between us, we have about 65 years experience in refinishing furniture. And so we take this time out to be able to answer questions. They don't have to deal with our products. Oh yeah, they do. No, no they don't. What's your favorite color? I have a lot of favorite colors. What's your favorite food? What we just ate. Okay. <laughs> I have to tell you, Jean just did a fabulous job cooking dinner. We um, we tried, uh, was it Sun Basket? Sun Basket. Sun Basket for the first time tonight. And it was fabulous. Send us free Sun Basket, <laughs> Sun Basket for the promo. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we've got questions to get to. And as we, um, uh, Kathleen, we're so glad you called us too. Hey guys. We're so glad y'all are watching. So we we do have questions that people send in that we are gonna be answering. And as we answer these, if something pops in your mind and you're like, I, I'm gonna ask them this, then we really encourage you to be able to ask us because it does not have to pertain to the products. That's where our knowledge level is. But if you have a question about how to redo something, or maybe you've run into a problem on redoing that piece of furniture um, or your kitchen cabinets, you can ask us and we will answer. All right. What's so, your favorite quote? Quote? Yeah. What's your favorite quote? Why are you asking me that? Well, you said I could ask stuff that didn't <laughs> pertain to our finishes. What's so sad is we've been married almost 30 years and he still does this and it catches me off guard in some weird way. I think it's adorable, but I don't know where his brain comes from. So I've got to, I've got to start reading these questions so he will answer these questions. All right. Um, okay, uh, this is, hold on, I just saw this as far as remember going to their class in Memphis. Um, hey guys, do a video on how to antique mirrors using a stencil on top. <sighs> Gene, tell, tell him. him. <laughs> no, you tell him. You tell him. Okay. Unfortunately, the sad news is that our <clears throat> the stripper used to remove the backing paint contained a chemical that is no longer available to be used in retail products. So that was. What's tell him the name of it? It was methylene chloride. And that's what made that backing paint bubble up and pop off. Right. Within minutes. Literally minutes. And, <clears throat> and since that's not available, backing paint is so durable mm -hmm. and so hardy because if you use a mirror on, the, on your walls, they use a mirror mastic to adhere it. Mm -hmm. And that mirror mastic is very aggressive. And if the backing paint isn't hardy and durable, the mirror mastic will eat through that backing paint. So that's why it, you're not gonna find a stripper at the hardware store that is going to remove that backing paint. We've tried <laughs> all of them that's available at hardware stores, paint stores, they don't remove that backing paint. Um, so we we're still working. Probably need, we need to, we need to work on that. We've, we've got a, uh, chemical company that is working on that for us uh, now to try and find something that is uh, it's legal and mm -hmm. and it will and it's do, not going to hurt your health and, right and in that it is such that it can remove that backing paint so until we do we are uh, we're in a holding pattern okay so I'm going to read the first question okay and these were sent in you can 
you can ask them live and we'll answer them. We've got several that we want to go through first. And here's the great thing. You can learn from other people's questions. And so these people are, a lot of them are part of our Amy Howard at Home Before and After page on Facebook, which um, if you're not part of that, join it because it's a beautiful community of people that love rescuing and restoring furniture. Um, and you will be inspired definitely by a lot of the finishes and the things that they do. I mean, here's a question. Is the black squiggly lines behind you paint or paper? There's no black squiggly lines behind us. <laughs> How did you do or get this? Um, we had an artist. Where's Francis? Where's Francis? Is, is the name of her uh, company. And, and it's a mural. And Francis did that behind us, that, that mural behind us. Yes. And we love it. We do. We're weird. We're, we love weird stuff. That's why we have a big fish in our kitchen. Um, it's interesting. So our house is this eclectic, um, our house is this eclectic blend of a lot of things. Um, Jean's sitting here going, it's starting to smell. Um, the fish. The fish. So, um, all right, so let's get to the questions before we go any further. All right, so Kimia asked, is there a reason um, you would use liming wax versus ceruzine wax? I can't tell a difference in the finish, only that they are two different consistencies. Mm -hmm. That is true. They are two different consistencies. Same product, one has a thinner viscosity than the other. For me, the difference as far as when I would use one over the other, if I am doing a, uh, a liming or pickled finish uh, over a open grained wood where I want that, I'm, I'm primarily wanting the wax to get down in the grain, I'm gonna use the liming wax because it's more of a paste, it's thicker, and it gets down in that grain and, and, it's, and it holds better when I buff. If Can I, I, would you add to that real quick? When you're doing the liming wax, would you apply the wax with the grain and then take it off against the grain? Or would you apply the wax against the grain? Yes, I would apply it against the grain so that it is going down into that grain as opposed to with the grain because I'm, I'm wanting to literally bury that liming wax in the grain, in the pitting of the grain and then wiping it off and then buffing it after it dries. If I'm looking for a liming finish where, or uh, almost or, a white glaze. Yeah, almost a whitewash look, mm -hmm. then the ceruzine wax is much easier to mm -hmm. apply because it's thinner and I can brush it out easier and it's gonna give me that whitewash look. So that's the, that's the two te techniques of when I would use one over the other. Okay. So the second question is, is it normal for a matte sealer to be sticky? Only if it hasn't dried yet. After it dries, it won't be sticky. Uh, I'm sure there's more to that question that would help me understand why it's sticky. Uh, if it's stirred really well before it's used, if it's applied, and again, just like paint, or other products that what we it's have. put on top of well what it's put on top of is is what it's put on top of is mm -hmm. yeah that is good is it dry yeah uh, and then you want to put thin coat rather than a thick coat mm -hmm. and with our matte sealer you put a thin coat mm -hmm. let it dry for a couple of hours mm -hmm. lightly sand it with some 320 or 400 grit sandpaper mm -hmm. just to even it out and then get the residue off Put a second coat on, let that dry, you're ready to go. But as why it would be sticky, I, I would say it could be a number of reasons mm -hmm. what it was applied on top mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. uh, it also could be that it was put on too thick mm -hmm. and so it's not curing. So mm -hmm. again, we don't know the all of the nuances with uh, the application to know why it may be sticky. One thing that we need to really remember is we're going into winter months. We live in Memphis, the humidity is really high. It's rained here all day today. And you need to allow more time for things to dry mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a tendency, they're, they're gonna have, they, the piece of furniture is gonna have a tendency to possibly what's called blush. 
Now, can blushing happen when you're waxing? Can the air or the humidity get trapped with that, or is that primarily when you're lacquering? That's or? More, uh, yeah, that's really more with lacquering because it's such a slow dry. Okay. Um, all right, Sec another qu third question is Peggy Leggett says, or ask, when I mix the gesso, and this is cracked gesso, what she's talking about. When I mix the cracked gesso, it seems to have bubbles. Does that mean it's too thin? I mix 50-50 with water and, a sp and, the sp and spoon the phone off. And spoon the foam off. So her question is, Why? is it normal for the gesso to have bubbles? And does that mean it's too thin? Since Toscana is your favorite finish, I'm gonna let you answer that. Um, so it's normal when you are mixing, when you're stirring to have some bubbles. That's normal. With milk paint and with the cracked gesso. What you wanna make sure, now a lot of times people will like whip it like they're, like they're cooking a cake and there's normal things that are gonna take place in that that are gonna cause some bubbles. Mm -hmm. What I suggest doing is because so much of the Toscana um, milk paints anyway are like cooking, you're, it's literally like food grade materials. If you don't know, milk paint truly is milk paint. It comes from casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. Casein has been around for thousands of years and has been used on um, even um, coffins, the Egyptians, everything. Frescoes. Frescoes, I mean, it's been around forever. And so the, um, the process that you're working with, with the cracked gesso, you're going to have some bubbles. So what I suggest doing is taking a little bit of cheesecloth and pouring after you've mixed it up, you can put it like in a mason jar, shake it up, have, make sure the lid's on it, and shake it up really good, and then pour it through, strain it through some cheesecloth. That will get the foam out, that way you're not painting with foam. Now, if you want to thicken it up just a little bit, add a little bit more cracked gesso to it. But here's the deal. When you paint on cracked gesso, it goes on thin, but it will dry white. So it looks thin, it will look like it's not covering, it will. Here's my concern. If you put on too much cracked gesso, which is those of you that are watching that you're going, what is she talking about, cracked gesso? The cracked gesso is intended to be able to give you a beautiful fissure crack when you are putting it underneath milk paint. And milk paint only. And milk paint only, yeah, good work. You do not use cracked gesso with one step. The cracked gesso is intended to give milk paint a cracked finish. If you put the, the cracked gesso on too thick, if you make it too thick and you're trying to put it on in an act like normal paint, it's, it will not work. It's gonna be thin, but it's going to dry opaque. Because if you put it on too thick, literally when you put the paint, the milk paint on top of it, that paint is just gonna pop off and come off. Did, did I answer that question? I think so. Could, so could they, when they make it, should they let it sit? Ooh, yeah, good word. So when you're making the cracked gesso, as well as the milk paint, you wanna make sure that you let it sit I want to say overnight. Well, the, we the, when we made furniture, we always crack, let it sit overnight. The, the cracked gesso, we would let it sit overnight. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't refrigerate it necessarily because we uh, knew we were going to use it the next morning. Right. Now, if you have leftovers, you need to seal it. You need to put it in a container, airtight, put it in the fridge. It'll last a week or two mm -hmm. uh, because again, it's all natural food and grade. Food grade, and you don't want to leave it sitting out or it'll spoil. Yeah, and the cool thing is, there's not another company on the on the earth that has cracked gesso. Mm -hmm. um, because when I worked in a bodega in Florence, Italy, that was part of a process that we learned. And so we literally have the, the patented process of cracking milk-based paints that allows you to be able to get an incredible finish. I'm just gonna put a little perk in here. Normally, not, it's not really a perk, what's it called? I don't know what you Well, tell them, I'm gonna give you a tip. <clears throat> tidbit? A little, yeah, Bonus. tidbit, whatever. Tomorrow, our sale starts 
our son comes up with these things. He's like, Mom and Dad, you need to have a sale in October. Um, so we're like, okay. So we're having a huge sale that starts tomorrow. My old world finishing course that we go over so much of the milk paint is gonna be on sale. It is an incredibly popular course and um, a lot of the people that are in it, you get a lot out of it. So if that's been something that you've wanted to know how to do really fabulous milk paint finishes, um, we go over that in the course. Okay. Gene Howard's hands have got to stay up on this counter. Is that food? Stop. All right, so um, next question. Um, if I paint my kitchen counter with one step paint, will the matte sealer be waterproof? And how many coats do I need to do? Okay, the matte sealer, when it dries and cures, and when we say cure, you know, you're talking about five to seven days of the curing. Curing is different from drying. Drying means it's dry to the touch. Curing means that all of the water-based part of it has evaporated out and the uh, matte sealer is more durable. So it's cured, so five to seven days. Now what's gonna happen when the matte sealer gets wet and you wipe it off, you're going to see a discoloration where the water is. But when the water dries, and that could take a couple, two, three hours, then that discoloration is gone. So uh, it will, it will work to, to as far as being waterproof. As far as coats on your counter, two to three would be minimum. Mm -hmm. I would apply a coat, let it dry a couple hours, very lightly sand it, put a second coat on, let that dry, lightly sand it, and then put a third coat on it. You really think it's necessary for a third I, coat? I would, on a countertop, I would do three coats, and I'm talking three, more thin coats, not thick not heavy. coats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when you put that last coat on, you do not have to sand it. And let that, again, cure for about five to seven days. And you shouldn't have any problems with it. You can use it for five to seven days. You can put things on top of it and use it. Jean's mm -hmm. just wanting you to make sure yeah. that you're not scooting stuff around on it. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is, because you can use you can um, use the one step paint on your uh, formica countertops. You can use it on stone. You can use it on um, particle board. You can use it on melamine. You can use it on anything formica, mm -hmm. any of that, um, and just clean it with a clean slate. You can use the one step. And the reason he's wanting you to do several coats of the sealer to go on top of it is we're we're thinking about strawberries and watermelon and red wine and things that can go on it that it'll be easy to keep clean um, because it is a very inexpensive way of redoing your kitchen. I will also put in a, um, a plug for something next month. We're doing what's called the um, Kitchen Transformation Summit and we are having influencers and people that redo furniture that are going to be showing you how to do kitchen cabinets, um, your countertops, to create your backsplashes and um, paint your floors. So we're gonna take you all through that process and it's gonna be amazing, amazing, I promise. You're gonna learn a lot. All right, so um, there's no reason why, and I love this, there's no reason why you can't redo your kitchen entirely for under $250, no reason. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Okay. Um, Kimberly James asks, I have sanded down my coffee table and end tables to the bare wood, which I love the look of. They need to be sealed, and I tried using the Amy Howard wax, but it changed their color a bit. Any suggestions on what I can use to keep the look, but protect them? Will the matte sealer be what I'm looking for? Well, you gonna talk about wood for a minute? Going back to my 30 years of refinishing experience, any clear coating, whether it's wax, whether it is a water-based polyurethane, whether it's lacquer, whether it's a solvent-based polyurethane, any clear coat you add to it is going to change the color. It's going to deepen uh, that color. Mm -hmm. So to answer that question, there is not a, even a 
uh, furniture tonic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What's some of those other ones the, uh, that are that? Um, I just think about beeswax and furniture tonic yeah, or matte sealer. Uh, Anything but, is going to deepen that color. A, a, oh gosh, I can't think of it. What's that other that, uh, that's a liquid that they rub in? But anyway, anything, you, it is going to change the color. It's, you, there's not a way that I'm aware of that you can apply any type of a clear coat mm -hmm. without changing the color of that raw wood. It's going to deepen it. It's going to make the grain pop, pop out and, and darken the grain. It's the nature of the beast. And there's nothing. Kimberly, nothing I am curious what kind of wood your piece is in because I'm going to tell you, we have an amazing piece in our dining room that is, I'll tell you what I'll do when we're almost finished here. I'm going to take you in the dining room. I'm going to show them. But that's an old antique piece. That I know. Is aged. I know, but no. she's just now sanded down, so it's going to be fresh. But what I want her to see is you don't have to seal everything. You, we have pieces in our house that are lacquered. We well, have that pieces can tell that when we put furniture tonic on. Yeah, we have a we have a dining table that we just put furniture tonic on. So it's not unfinished. Right, but I'm saying that piece that we have in the dining room, there's nothing on it. It was bleached. Furniture tonic. Not that buffet in the dining room. There's nothing on it. Oh. Now mm -hmm. he remembers. Yes. So, um, thanks, Lisa. That's such a sweet thing to say. So, um, okay, so Kimberly, don't you don't- Don't look upstairs. You, <laughs> <laughs> Our upstairs is really scary. We're working on it. It's phase two. Oh, it's phase two for phase sure. Phase two renovations. Phase two. Okay. So, Kimberly, um, if you like that and you've sanded them down, enjoy them. You know, you can clean them, but you don't have to seal them if you don't want to. They will stain. They will stain, but you know what? That's okay, too. Uh, the character. I That's call it character. totally character. Um, okay. I got, I got a mole. You <laughs> Okay, Deborah Brown asks, I am looking for a greenish gray color. Any suggestions? She's talking about one step, a greenish gray. Yeah, I was gonna say, where are we talking one step paint? To she's asking, milk she's talking, paint, she's talking one step. Lacquer. She's talking uh, one step, a greenish gray color. Deborah, uh, I, before Jean answers that question, I would recommend you can go to um, amyhowardhome.com and we have hand painted color charts. We have a hundred colors Toscana sage. that are hand painted. Jean is saying Toscana sage. Toscana sage is a greenish gray. It is a really pretty color. Mm -hmm. And we do, we do try to have our color selections. The ones that we have in Amy Howard Home are pretty much based upon my interior design expertise, if you can say that. Um, Having colors that are more traditional, safe, that would be painted with furniture. Mm -hmm. But now our Color of the Month Club, are they're, they're wild and crazy colors that are on trend. Mm -hmm. Another sneak peek that I'll give you is um, the November Color of the Month is an amazing, amazing blue color. Amazing. And these Color of the Months are... Um, great on trend really rich rich colors that we have sarah davis who is an incredible influencer who i adore that she teaches a course on um, color theory and colors wall colors other furniture pieces accessories everything that will go and work around that color of the month color it's just a great great community and thing to do sorry how amazing is that color stop it's amazing. How amazing. It's, it's fabulous. It is so amazing. David Copperfield can't figure it out. <laughs> okay. Um, Barbara Black has a question. I want to paint my bathroom and kitchen countertops with one step and use the matte sealer. My question is, um, is the product food safe for kitchen? And is this a strong enough top coat since I'm hard on my countertops? Thank you. This seems like a popular question. Mm -hmm. We just kind of answered that. But do you want to elaborate on mm -hmm. that at all? You know, we can, this is a general, it doesn't necessarily um, have to be inclusive or exclusive to our products, 
but if you want something extremely durable for kitchen countertops, you can use a solvent-based, water clear um, polyurethane. That is the most durable, but it is not necessarily going to be food safe because it is solvent based. Mm -hmm. But as I have always said in my 30 years of refinishing furniture, I am not going to put raw chicken on top of my countertops and start cutting it up. I'm going to use, use a, a cutting, cutting board. board. So I really am not using my countertops for food preparation. Mm -hmm. I'm using a um, cutting board. I'm using pots and pans. I'm using, um, you know, cooking cookie sheets, whatever mm -hmm. I need for that. So that's not the issue. But as far as durability of dropping, throwing, hitting, you know, the, the solvent-based water clear polyurethanes are going to be your most durable. The, the uh, excuse me, solvent-based. The water-based uh, polyurethanes, can't, that is your eco-friendly. It's not as durable, but it's- It's prettier. Eco, but it's an eco-friendlier. It's, it's prettier. It's an eco-friendlier product and you don't have the smell, you don't have the solvents, uh, so it's a much better environmentally friendly, eco-friendly product. So uh, there's a trade-off, environmentally friendly or extremely durable. You're the judge. Environmentally friendly. I am very, very opinionated on finishes and sometimes they're too glossy looking, they cheapen the finish that you're trying to do. So I think we need to be really careful about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris Jones asked, I painted my kitchen countertops using your marbling technique. If you wanna see a video on how to marbleize your kitchen counters and they look amazing, I may, I'm using that word a lot, don't I? Sorry. Go to our YouTube channel and watch um, countertops marbling. Um, all right, so I painted my kitchen countertops using your marbling technique and I finished them with the matte sealer. Do I need to reseal it after a period of time since it gets cleaned and wiped often? You know, with again, with the matte sealer, it is a water-based poly. Mm -hmm. So it isn't necessary to do that over a period of time. And again, what's that period of time? If you're talking a few years, I don't believe so. Uh, if you're talking many years, uh, yes, eventually there is going to be wear. If there's a lot of usage on something, you're going to get wear. And over a period of time, it will possibly need another coat of matte sealer. And you'll be able to tell when that time You've got comes. years that you can enjoy it, though, yeah. really and yeah. truly. And you may be ready to do something new after that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm looking to buy into buying a cabinet. This is uh, Bonnie Karkinen. Carcanyon. Um, hey, Bonnie. Um, I am looking into buying a cabinet made in the Catskills of Northern Yellow Birch. It has an oiled finish treatment of layers of mineral oil applied to it. What do I need to do to remove all that oil as far as prep for painting with One Step or Amy Howard gel stain? And do you think I may be on a Mission Impossible or just look for another cabinet? I love the fact that it's from the Catskills. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what do you? What would you tell Bonnie? <laughs> I'm doing Why all are you that. laughing? Because I'm doing all that. Because you're the expert. Yeah, I'm you're the yeah, expert. Yeah, I'm the yeah, finisher. You know, I'm the finisher. A painter. Me, you told me I'd get twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so no, Bonnie. The. <laughs> When you're, hey, Janet. when you use an oil-based product, whether it's uh, mineral oil, uh, and anything with the word oil in it, that's your, that's your key. Uh, ding, ding, key. ding, ding, yeah, ding. Yeah, that's like a red flag. It's oil. That raw wood absorbs that oil. It, it's raw wood is like a sponge, mm -hmm. very porous, mm -hmm. very absorbent, and mm -hmm. it soaks it in. It sucks it in, and it holds it. Um, so there is that possibility, even if you used our one, or excuse me, our clean slate, which is a finisher's regrade, finisher's grade um, uh, wax oil remover, uh, 
grime, anything that removes that, it will be difficult to get down deep and penetrate enough to get that oil off. So there is a possibility that if you use the one-step paint on that, that at some point it could begin to lift. And when it lifts, it'll start cracking and it'll start peeling. So it's very so difficult. So what does she do? Well, um, it, uh, do you think I may be on Mission Possible? Should I look for another cabinet? Well, that's possible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I mean, but here's I would be um, I would be sad if you went to the uh, to the time. Uh, okay, to, question, to, question, to, question. To, to pay. What if she used the stain? What if she used oh, the well, Amy Howard stain? Well, that's different. But in either one, you can use the stain. Now, remember, our stain is water based, mm -hmm. and if it's had mineral oil applied to it. So you've got a water-based stain on an oil, they, they do not mesh. They will, it's like, um, you know, negative, two, two negatives or two positives, a magnet are, are repelling one another. And it does the same thing. Now, again, you can probably put that on there and, uh, and, and work it in, but you would still need to seal the stain. You would need to seal the stain. Now, you can seal the stain with an oil-based product and you will be okay because that oil-based You can based put oil-based paint over water-based paint, but you, as a rule, it's, you don't normally put water-based on top of oil-based, except with, paint. unless it's one step. Right. But again, we're not talking about oil-based paint. We're talking about mineral oil and mineral, it's a different animal. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a... It, it never really cures, and mm -hmm. so it's always there in its liquid state, ready to um, react with the water base. So I would just, my concern would be if you painted that piece with mm -hmm. one step paint, mm -hmm. and weeks, months down the line, it begins to lift and-, and As far as a solid. And, and crack, right. So maybe if, so you, if the, you are in love with that piece, then maybe do the gel stain. Yeah, I would do the gel stain and then do a solvent-based polyurethane on top, top of it. Or a wax. Or, yeah, or, wa or wax is a solvent-based solvent as base. well. So, yeah, you could use the wax as well. Aren't you, aren't you glad I'm here? Well, I always, I always see, years. I see the glass half full. Gene see well, I don't want to say that because he does see that glass. Gene needs another glass. Gene needs another glass. Okay, all right, another question. Um, Kathleen Ray says, can the one-step work on wicker furniture? Yes. Yes. Yes, just clean slate first. Clean get slate all, it. Get all, if it's been, sit, especially if it's been sitting outside a grandma's attic or something, you wanna go in with that clean slate and get all that dirt and grime and stuff off of it. Even, here's something, because a lot of wicker furniture has oil-based paint on it. Just clean it and you can paint it with the one step. Mm -hmm. I would suggest using a sprayer to spray the wicker. Now, Jean, tell them about how much you wanna thin the one step paint if you're gonna use it in a sprayer. Well, you know, a lot of that depends on the, <clears throat> the sprayer ma uh, manufacturer because a lot of times they use different uh, tips that are included with that sprayer. So if depending, and it'll usually tell you if you're putting paint through here to uh, uh, dilute it with a certain amount. So just follow the directions with the sprayer, but all of your hardware stores, paint stores, they make these uh, little handheld sprayers for paint. And uh, again, they'll, they'll have in there, uh, depending on their, uh, their spray tip, what the amount of dilution of water you should use. Good word. But you can brush it on if you want to, too. Awesome, I see that Clarissa is painting her kitchen. Update us. Um, hey, Leah Kendrick, hey guys. Leah Kendrick just got through doing her kitchen. Um, and it's fabulous. You should see it on the Amy Howard at Home page. Um, let me see. Can I want clean slate damage the finish on a porcelain sink? 
it will not it will not damage the finish mm -mm. but if you're going to use one step on that porcelain sink uh keep in mind that one step is chalk based so it's porous it's, and, and it's, it's porous. porous so if you you know soap uh and things like that will have mm -hmm. a ten tendency to discolor that so you do want to put some kind of a sealer over that not because it has to be sealed, but because mm -hmm. you want to protect it from stains from the soap, soap scum and things like that. Megan, we're so excited. You're painting your kitchen floors. Paint, um, is it uh, Paint and Planks? Paint and Planks does some amazing kitchen floors with our one-step paint. She's a yoga person. She's adorable. Does she do goat yoga? She I don't know if she does goat yoga, oh. but she does yoga, and her name of her business is Paint and Planks. And it's, she does a great job. All right, so we went a little long. Sorry, sorry. Um, so if you have questions that you want us to be able to answer when we do Ask Amy and Jean on Wednesday nights at 6.30, um, just send them in to our customer service. You can also um, put them here on our page and Marty and the team will get them off and send them to us so we can answer them. And, the, um, and send, the sooner you send them, the better, because the sooner we get them on there, we can be looking at them and prepping and uh, coming up with some canned answers. Oh no, now she's, as she's saying, she, wait, hold on, hold on. I mean, Jean keeps like messing with my back when, I, when we try to do this. Um, Linda says, I'm washing my brushes in my bathroom. <laughs> That's why I'm asking about. I love that. <laughs> okay, well let me let me let me give you let me give you the professional answer on that. Contact your local EPA department and ask them what's the best way to dispose of that because Clean Slate is solvent based. So that is our uh, legal department answer. <laughs> You'll be, you'll be, I would get a Tupperware container to clean your brushes in. Yes, yes. I think that would be really yes. smart. But, um, uh, I love Capri. Sorry I'm late. I was painting. <laughs> this is our no tribe. Caprice. This is our tribe. It's so funny. I was, um, I was home today and, um, working and I was working on pro <coughs> projects and, it had been a long time since I'd been at home painting and working, and I was like, I love this. I miss this. So, you know, um, Caprice, we're right there with you in the fact that painting is very therapeutic. Being able to take something and transform it or make it beautiful, it's so much fun. Oh, and, oh my gosh, the dogs are giving each other kisses. Did you Can you see where, them? Where, where Can they, you see them where, in the camera? What are they doing? Hey, guys, come here. Here's the weirdest thing we've got to get off of here. We, uh, uh, Theo is our great Pyrenees, and Gracie is our little Cavalier King Charles. And he, you know what's weird? I think they got married. <laughs> Thank goodness Theo is um, denudered. <laughs> And so, and, and, and Gracie isn't, so. But they love each yeah, other. They love, they each, love other. each other. Yes. We have a cat sitting up here, and we have the dogs. Got, okay. My, <laughs> Don't show that. It's extra. <laughs> <laughs> they have a good time. It's our little family, so it's fun. All right, guys. So good. Hey, Tamara. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, everybody. This just, I just want you to know you um you bless us so much we are so honored and so blessed to have a business that we love pouring into you and teaching you and encouraging you and the community that we have it's really really beautiful so thank you for tuning in tonight thank you for allowing us to just kind of pour into you and use what um the 30 30 years and the 30 years which is 60 years of refinishing furniture um, and how we can just take what we know to be able to make your life a little bit easier and your projects a little bit more fun. So thanks so much. If this was helpful to you, we'd love for you to share it on social media and um, share with your friends and say, here's two old people that, um, that are sharing their knowledge. Do I have to go back to my room now? <laughs>
Oh, Gene Howard. You, fo you fixed a great dinner, though. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you for being a part. Oh, I'm glad to be here. All right, guys. Have a great week. We're really hoping, fingers crossed, we've got a project planned for Friday that we're going to be doing on Finish Friday. We've missed you. Have yes. a great week. Yes. Bye.